just a gifted, dynamic offensive hockey player. Korea on the north end. He scores! What a spectacular play! I've got to use my, my speed and, and my thinking game. Have you ever seen a quicker release than Paul Korea has? He's a true professional. He brings a, a work ethic that's hard to duplicate. Oh, my goodness. Is that Paul Korea? Yes, it is. Paul Korea. And since we saw the first teaser for this Michael Farber story, both of us, we couldn't wait because Paul Korea, the retired player, such a mystery. Yeah, it's so true. In November, Korea will join former line mate Timu Solani when they're inducted to the Hockey Hall of Fame, thrusting him once again into the spotlight. After a long wait, Paul Korea surfaces. You'll never be able to find a player like Wayne Gretzky, but Paul has the possibility of coming as, as close as anyone possibly could. Shanahan gets it ahead. Here's Korea with a huge goal. It is over. Canada, world champions. Ducks steal it here. Shot score for Korea. Number 15. First time in franchise history. Linda Korea, what a goal that was. He's almost dropped out. He's not a public figure now. You know who Greta Garbo was? Yeah. I want to be alone. Is this Paul Korea? I want to be alone? <laughs> I might use that next time. I, like, I love the fact that we might start uh, comparing Paul to Greta Garbo. It hurts me that, you know, like, he doesn't want to be part of a hockey because I think he has a lot to offer. Hopefully one day he will come back. Oh, my goodness. Is that Paul Korea? Yes, it is. Is the Hall of Fame induction an honor or an intrusion? It is time to officially retire your number eight. Two years ago, the Anaheim Ducks retired Tammy Solani's number eight. Hockey fans remember the ceremony well in part because his most renowned hockey co-star did not attend. There were some people in Southern California who were disappointed he weren't there. Where were you? I had a family commitment and I was out of town. Why haven't you gone back? Um, I don't know. Uh, people ask me this all the time when I'm not at games. I'm not at games because I don't play anymore. I'm not not out there because of any issue with hockey or with the league or anything like that. I'm, I keep a low public profile because I'm a private person. Paul Correa's spectacular Ocean View home is 20 minutes from the Honda Center, give or take Southern California traffic. Why is Paul able to live so easily without the adoration? I think because he's just comfortable with himself. I think he's you know, happy in his own skin. He doesn't need anyone telling him how great he is or how much he's admired. Describe your typical day. I usually get up, do some yoga, stretching, core work, either surf out here or go, go surf with my buddies. Sometimes it's an hour and a half, sometimes it's four hours, depending on how good the waves are. Come back home and spend some time with, uh, with Val and Wyatt. You don't have any hockey mementos in your house. Why? I've never kept mementos. Is that because you were afraid they would define you? If I'm going to look anywhere, I, I try to look forward, but ideally to be in the present. What is it about surfing that spoke to you? Initially, it was a new challenge. Learning a new sport, I've always enjoyed learning new things. It was a big time challenge. Is it therapeutic? For sure. 
I've got buddies that go out there and they're really not even interested in catching waves. They just want to be out in the ocean and just sit there and be with their thoughts. You're just there with your board and uh, enjoying yourself. So it's, it's, a, it's a peaceful uh, sport. Is the game poorer because he doesn't want to step out of the shadows? I think that the game would be a lot better with Paul Korea involved, certainly. And uh, I, I know that he's somebody that that I always look forward to hearing from him or getting a text from him, uh, getting thoughts from him, because I know he also doesn't pull punches. And that's why I think he would be valuable to any organization. When was the last time you put on your hockey gear? My hockey gear was the last time I played in St. Louis. You haven't been curious about, gee, what would it like to be skating in my gear? Um, if, if I could, I would still love to be playing professionally. No questions asked. Chasing all over. Oh, Korea, look out. Going to be a penalty on Kalata. Like life itself, careers are always unfinished stories. That concussion ended Korea's. He was 35. Woke up in a, in a hospital bed, and I didn't know who I was or where I was. And, you know, when I saw what happened, I was furious, wouldn't describe the words. And not for myself, for the fact that these hits were still happening in the game. How much of your brain function did you lose after the concussions? At the end of my career, when I was uh, tested by uh, Dr. Level, who created the impact testing, I dropped over 60%. And when I was tested by another doctor, uh, Dr. Eamon, just a general test for my age group, I was testing in the 25th percentile. Est-ce que vous avez une chute là dans la région de Rennes? I was a decent student. I, uh, I got into Harvard. I, I'm not a 25 percent student. I mean, there was significant damage. He was in a little bit of a darkness. Did you notice a change in him? Yes and no. He never, like, took it out on me or was angry or he just dealt with what he had to deal with. Going to the oxygen chamber, doing the things that he needed to do, he's very good at it, very regimented. When did things start to clear that you thought that I'm going to be OK? Two years later. Korea sustained six concussions. On some level, you've been reduced to concussion guy. Mm -hmm. Does that concern you? You know, I like to be remembered for for uh, the type of player I was on the ice when I was playing, and not when I was out. But your career. Three Olympics, or it should have been three Olympics. 989 points in 989 games. Second in the Hart Trophy balloting, a Lady Bing winner. You're an important player in the league, and there's been this reduction of your career into one thing. Around this area, people will, will come up to me, and they're like, I was at the arena when you got up after the Stevens hit, and, you know, and that's how they remember me. Oh my goodness. Is that Paul Correa? Yes, it is. Paul Correa landed on his back and didn't move. Didn't move. Game six. You saw the hit in real time because yeah. Paul just has the puck. What was your response to that hit? Well, obviously, it was a blow, and, uh, you know, you're trying to win the Stanley Cup. Oh, what I do remember, I remember Kriya laying on the ice, and you could see from the bench when he started to, when he exhaled, and his, the fog came over. And then, you know, in today's world, they'd never let him play again. And in that world, he, he was back out in the ice and playing right away. What do you remember about the hit? Nothing. Do you know how long you were out? I've seen video of it, but I don't have any recollection of live time. 48 seconds, you were on the ice, motionless. Do you remember getting up? No. Do you remember going to the dressing room? No. Do you remember coming back to the bench? No. 
you remember scoring a goal? No. Everyone else remembers you scoring a goal. Mm -hmm. You have no recollection of it. I have no recollection of anything that happened before game six, game six, game seven, two days afterwards. Why doesn't the league hire someone like you in player safety than some of the people they've got working there now? That's a question for the league. How should the league best address concussions? Well, I, I think today we're in a way better spot than they were when I retired. Um, things are moving in the right direction, but still those targeted headshots are still in the game. And, and for me, uh, there's no reason to have that in the game. The Hall is pleased to welcome Paul Correa as an honored member. Congratulations, Paul. Is the Hall of Fame induction an honor or an intrusion? It's the biggest honor that I've ever had in my life. Something that never in my wildest dreams would I have thought of at any point in my life. The 1993 winner of the Hobie Baker Award from the University of Maine. The first entry draft selection in the history of the Mighty Ducks is Paul Correa of the University of Maine. What better guy to sell hockey in California? If you're looking at it from the point of view of Disney and the wholesome family image, they couldn't get a better guy than Paul Correa. Walking into uh, a cold rink and uh, feeling that on your body was uh, something uh, when we came in here today that I really enjoy. What made you fall in love with the game? I don't know if there was an instant or a moment, but as a kid growing up in Vancouver, everybody was playing hockey. The best memories of that time was going to Sunday morning hockey, and uh, there was uh, free ice every Sunday morning at like 5.30 a.m. Just playing the game, and it was unbelievable. The Hockey Hall of Fame induction will be a celebration of a marvelous career. The ultimate validation of a dashing left winger who rode his own wave. There were some tough times for sure, but the great times far outweighed those. So cool. Uh, tremendous piece. Uh, as we, we should mention uh, Michael Farber and Matt Dunn, the producer. Great job. Yeah. Great job on that piece. There. So I didn't know what to find, but I thought you'd find a guy that was. Uh, Angry. Not angry at all. No, a couple of things stood out. It's so unfortunate that he couldn't retire on his own terms because he seems to have mastered retirement. Unlike a lot of professional yep. athletes who struggle to find their way after retirement, he seems content. He seems to content with what he's doing every day, seems to be living a great life. And the other side of it is, you know, when Michael asked him about why don't why doesn't the NHL hire someone like you in the player safety department? He said that's a question for the NHL. So obviously he kind of left the door open there mm -hmm. to return to the game in some capacity if the league would reach out to him, I think. And when you look at hits from that when he played, oh man, oh, I know. every one of them is illegal now. You know, that's the thing about Paul Correa. Like, Ugh. if Paul Correa played today in today's NHL, he would be unstoppable. Because these kinds of hits, as you said, aren't, aren't legal anymore. He would be so, I mean, he was unstoppable as it was. He was an incredible player, and obviously he's going to the Hall of Fame. But can you imagine if he played today, the way the, yeah. the rules are today? It would, it would just be unbelievable. I'm just glad uh, the mystery is solved. Yes. The mystery that is Paul Korea. Yes, indeed. Uh, still to come, the Jannies. What is it? Who is he? Is it a person? <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs>